Today our talk focuses on immersive experiences and the impact of technology in general and virtual reality in specific on architectural education and profession. Uh, before I delve into the presentation, I would like to start with a quote about the power of technology and how it has and still will shape our futures. Stated by the Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, uh, Klaus Schwab, economic and political power will be determined less by a country's size than by its technological superiority. Of course, this is not new because technology throughout history has augmented the human physical and mental capacities and through that, it has shaped the world we are living in. The presentation is organized in five main parts. The first one deals with the power of imagination in the past or present, on current and plausible future ideas and realizations. The second part is an introduction to immersive experiences. The third part talks about the influence of technology in general and VR in specific on current and future built environments. The first part highlights on VR usage in education and architecture. And the final section, I hope you will be here. It's a live performance that we will do here so that we show you how we can design inside virtual reality. One has to admit that imagination, as subtle as it is, when empowered by technology, is a powerful tool that can mold the physicality of the future. I have to tell you that nothing beats a technology that can allow us to have an immersive experience. And when we say immersive, some words and worlds come to our minds, engaging, interacting, surrounded, imaginative, and virtually real. Before we elaborate on that, it is fundamental to contextualize virtual reality using the virtuality continuum that encompasses all possible variations and compositions of real and virtual objects. The area where both extremes are mixed is called the mixed reality, AR occur in the real world where the virtual augments the real, AV occurs in the virtual world when the real augments the virtual. One of the first attempts of an immersive experiences was in 1950s Morton Hellig Sensorama that was intended to fully immerse the individual in the film. To understand further the power of the immersive experience, it is important to differentiate between the conventional, traditional tools of design and the method that uses VR. I come from a generation that used to design everything by hand. Uh, we use the pen and paper and physical models. I'm still fond of them. And we always started to imagine architectural space in the mind first, then use 2D flat papers to communicate plans, section, and then three-dimensional representations. At a later stage, although some still prefer to use paper and tracing paper, I still do, by the way, CAD and BIM replaced these tools, and the flat paper was replaced by a flat screen. With all the advantages that computers and their screens have offered to the designers and educators, VR is by far one of the best tools that current technology has evolved. This is because of the immersive experience and experiential factor that allow the user to experience their designs in real size at the same time fluctuate between egocentric perspective and exocentric view. There is no doubt that VR will affect many disciplines and will change the way we communicate, interact, operate, and execute things from digital transportation to immersive uh, media and art. This, of course, will not stop at specific disciplines, but will affect the way our cities will become. It is affecting now as we speak, and these scenarios are no longer a distant future. On the pendulum that oscillates between a utopian or dystopian future of cities, one had to admit that technologies in general will help create a multi-directional outcome of plausible future rather than one singular and a uniquely directional one. And I'm not talking about the creation of a virtual world where you can navigate, but one that can have the virtual capacities and behaviors. Where space can be multiplied and the law of nature can be transcended, such as being in different spaces at the same time and so forth. Such powerful tool is affecting not only the design industry, but also the design education. At the Center for Research, Innovation and Design, at the School of Architecture, Art Design, the American University in Dubai, 
we have installed state-of-the-art computers that are compatible with VR technology. The center is powered by HTC Vive systems that can track the users wherever they are in the center and allow them to design and navigate freely in an immersive manner. The center is the first and only in the MENA region that is an authorized Rhino training center, authorized VR sketch training center, and Gravity Sketch certified center. They all use virtual reality. DEFT 473 is a course taught at the school that uses the center equipment to teach students how to design in an immersive way. The way the class is taught is a flipped method of what students use to design in other courses. Here students design in an immersive environment three-dimensionally and then take their designs into 2D. I will show you a quick video. Students at the university can benefit from this, but also professionals can be trained in the same manner, and anyone in the design industry can experience and augment their skills. In this video, I demonstrate the significance of such tools and methods. The Center for Research, Innovation, and Design at the American University of Medicine is the first and only utilized VR sketch teams and gravity sketch certified software in the United States. Designing inside the material. As you can see here, they all collaboratively design the same element. So it's like a, a virtual space, virtual classroom, and everybody can be there working together. Of course, other stakeholders can be part of that. Engineers, users of space, can experience so, of course, I, I practice what I preach. So, and as an architect, I use this technology in my own work, uh, whether future environments, built environments, or experimental environments. Uh, I found uh, VR to be a tool that, unlike any other before, it can bring in other stakeholders to the design process and outcome, kind of like democratizing design. Uh, I'm currently designing the project where the clients are invited, along with other engineers, to examine and participate in the process of design and not only the outcome of that design. Um, specifically in the work I do that focuses on future environments and the case of gravity-defined architecture, also known as airborne architecture, I generally create and execute physical prototypes of building floating in the air. Uh, all prototypes uh, as a physical model have been exhibited in many forums around the world. So why I'm mentioning this? In 2020 and due to the pandemic, I was unable to create and exhibit a real physical model of the waterfall prototype and an animation was not enough, as you can see here. I found uh, VR to be extremely helpful and has provided me the opportunity to create an immersive prototype where the visitor can access scale one-to-one -one and experience the design from a first-person perspective.
Then in 2021, the prototype was exhibited at the Palazzo Mora in the context of the Venice Architecture Biennale, where people can access it from all around the world and use the art to experience the project in real life scale. Right in the back there. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so I can okay, hear you. So as an artist, yes. you, you, you create your design using VR. Yes. Okay, which program? There are a lot of programs, but the one like I use is uh, VR Sketch, Gravity Sketch. Uh, I use visualization uh, programs that allows the VR experience as well, such as with motion. Let me tell you what they're doing. A lot of applications that used to use screen are moving into VR. Because once, once you use the virtual reality, uh, it actually, um, it's a very powerful tool that you, you, you feel that the screen is very limiting. So the, the moment you start designing in a three-dimensional immersive environment, uh, you will realize that what you do on the screen is very limited in relation to what you could do in an immersive environment. And uh, I've been doing this for almost three years. And I can tell you, when I fluctuate between the screen and the VR, now I can really see see the limitation of the screen. I'm not saying it's not good, it's just a flat 2D and it cannot compete with an immersive environment, with an immersive experience. And this is what I try to portray to even my student who doesn't know you, 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 what is it about. Because you see it on the screen, you think it's the same. Why we are doing a big deal out of it? But once you put it on and you realize how immersive it is and what you can do, it's like we're being in this, you know, this space and we can create things out of the thin air. And we can come together and change that, uh, make it bigger, walk in it, change the color, texture, uh, and every software have their own power in that. So, you know, I always iterate the, to everyone that VR is an unprecedented tool that allows an immersive experience like never before. And it is important not to confuse it with the screen experience. So the best way is to try it, which take us to the final stage that is a live performance and demonstration. So we're going to do it there, right? Okay.